Hey everyone, welcome to our podcast on the relationship between photosynthesis and cell respiration. Now in class we've talked about what photosynthesis is and what happens, and we've also done the same thing for cell respiration. So let's just quickly review what they are. Now photosynthesis is the way plants are actually able to use sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water to make sugar. I think that's a pretty awesome thing to do. And cell respiration is the way organisms use that sugar to create energy so organisms can do with it whatever it is that they need to do to live. So let's start by taking a look at photosynthesis. Now to start off with photosynthesis, we're going to take a look at the raw materials here on the left of the reaction. So the raw materials for photosynthesis include a gas called carbon dioxide, water, and then energy from the sun in the form of sunlight. Now the plants are going to absorb this and the chloroplasts are going to work their magic and create this sugar, this glucose molecule. And as a result, they're going to create a pretty helpful waste gas, which is oxygen. So that's how plants go about making food. Now, what's going to happen is organisms are going to use some of that stuff to make energy. For To make energy, organisms need to use glucose, they need oxygen, and then as a result, these molecules are going to enter the cells, go into the cytoplasm where cell respiration starts, and then it'll move into the mitochondria and finish out the actual cycles. And we're going to get products such as carbon dioxide, water, and ATP energy. If we take a look at these two equations, you're going to notice that they're very similar. There's just one thing that's different about them, one major difference between them. As we were saying in photosynthesis, they need to make glucose, and as a result, they make oxygen as a waste product. But if you take a look at the plant products, and then you take a look at the cell respiration raw materials, you're going to notice that the things that plants make are the things that we need. So you'll notice that the cell respiration needs glucose and oxygen to start. Now, obviously that shows us that we really depend on plants, either directly or indirectly. But do plants need animals, or do animals help out plants as well? Well, yeah, we do. So let's take a look at cell respiration here. You're going to notice that we're going to make carbon dioxide. We're going to produce water vapor that will eventually return to Earth as liquid water. And we're going to produce energy. And if you take a look at those three products of cell respiration, and then compare them to the raw materials of photosynthesis, you're going to see that they're the same. The only difference is the energy types. Obviously, cell respiration we use to make energy, so we keep that ATP to carry out life processes. But the sun is the energy source for photosynthesis. Plants do actually rely on us. One way to remember this is that photosynthesis and cell respiration are opposite reactions to one another. So let's take a look at how this looks like in real life between a plant and an animal. All right, so this is our way to look at how photosynthesis in plants and respiration in animals kind of go hand in hand with one another. We have an ant here hanging out on a leaf on a sunny day, getting a quick bite to eat. Well, maybe not too quick because look at that hole that he's put in this leaf. He's been going to work for a while here. Let's start talking about photosynthesis first. So as we've been talking about, sunlight is going to enter the leaf, hit the chloroplast in the palisades layer. Carbon dioxide is going to diffuse into the leaf through the stoma in the bottom of the leaf, and then water is going to be pulled up from the roots, travel through these vessels or vascular tissue in special cells called xylem cells. And they're all going to bring these materials into the chloroplast in the leaves. Now, as the chloroplasts work their magic and carry out photosynthesis, they're going to come up with glucose and oxygen. Super important for animals here. Because what's going to happen next is the glucose that's in the leaves is going to enter the body of this ant here as he's chomping away at this leaf. So every bit of leaf that he chews up and swallows and digests, the glucose is going to enter its cells. And because it needs to breathe, it's going to take in oxygen from the atmosphere. So right now, we have glucose and we have oxygen going into this organism. Okay, so we can illustrate it like this. The glucose is going to go into the organism as he eats it and go into the cells. And in addition, the oxygen is going to enter the cells. Alright, so now this ant has everything it needs to make energy. 
So as it makes energy, what's going to happen is the mitochondria is going to convert those things into ATP energy. And those are the energy molecules that this ant needs. And this ant is going to produce a gas, a waste gas, that we've been saying is carbon dioxide. And the carbon dioxide is going to enter the atmosphere. And it's going to go back into the leaf because the stoma are going to be open and diffuse back in. So that's how the carbon dioxide that are produced by animals gets back into plants. And then lastly, water vapor is going to be given off. Now the water vapor is a gas, so it won't go directly into the plant. However, the water vapor is going to rise into the atmosphere, cool into liquid water droplets in clouds, and then one day when the liquid water droplets get too heavy and the clouds get too big, we know what happens when clouds roll in. There's going to be rain, and that rain is going to come down into the earth, soak up the soil, and then that water is going to be pulled up by the roots again. So this is how cell respiration and photosynthesis work together. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.